Somebody asked about golf folks when I do my interviews. So TV is just something that's here today and gone tomorrow, really, even though we've done it for the past uh, day, 30 years in Tennessee. As a young boy, I uh, went to work for veterinary at the age of 11. Uh, he would come out to our farm to check the animals, and I asked him if I could, you know, go clean cages in his place. And this was a 19... I'll give away my age. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was a stupid mistake. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Like, uh, oh, boy. Oh, I'll get out of this one. Like 1958, okay? It's a long ago. Uh, believe it or not. And I would go out there. He thought I lasted a day. I lasted six years. And then with Dr. Roberts, he was a graduate of Auburn University. And I would go there to Knox Animal Clinic, a little animal clinic, about 15 miles from my farm. I would clean cages. And he, I, again, one day he thought I'd go, but I lasted six years. And the last year I cleaned for him, he'd take me to the zoo. The Knoxville Zoo back then, like most zoos in this country, were nothing to brag about. Probably half of them should have been shut down back in the 50s and 60s. So thank goodness the folks like yourselves who bared with it. And we now saw how zoological parks have changed. Uh, now we have 220 accredited zoos in this country, the aquariums, which are phenomenal. And 172 million people visited them last year. 172 million people, that's counted people. The largest recreation in America. They're going to throw football, baseball, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of people going there. And so what we did was, I, I just believed in the, in the zoo, and when I was a keeper there, actually when I went with him at uh, the age of 17 or whatever it was, to the zoo to carry his little doctor bag around, I said, someday I want to be a zookeeper. And I never wavered from that dream, kids, or I know a few kids here. Uh, I never wavered from that dream my entire life. And I just went ahead and went to college, and back then the Vietnam War hot and heavy, so I just wanted to get out of school, Tennessee there, and then go back to the service, which I did. Came out and then uh, worked at Knoxville Zoo playing cages. Uh, because, you know, you know, that's what you did in zoos back then, basically. Uh, there was no animal enrichment, no education, there was nothing. Other than the people come to the zoo and throwing peanuts and stuff at all the animals, uh, like most zoos. And then I went to Central Florida in 19, day, 1972, to build a rural zoo outside of Orlando called the Central Florida Zoo. And then uh, uh, in um, day, 1976, we went to Ohio. Our daughter had a real uh, cancer real bad at St. Jude's, and that kind of turned things around for a couple of years. Then I went to Columbus, Ohio in 1978, where I've been ever since for 31 years. Columbus Zoo in 1978, with within four weeks, not even a month, of having its doors closed by the federal government. That's how bad it was. The Columbus Zoo was under the Sewers and Drains Department. <laughs> and all the staff wore Sewers and Drains shirts. That was real nice. Uh, so we thought we'd better change that to Parks and Recreation before we started raising money. Uh, and that's what we did. And to make a long story short, the Columbus Zoo now covers about 605 acres. That covered all the acres. We the, our zoo is located in a very Go to Columbus, Ohio, which none of you have any reason to go there, probably. Uh, especially in the wintertime. Uh, but north of Columbus, in, in a very nice area, so we bought up all the land in, in 10 years around us, kind of like Walt Disney did. And we knew what would happen, and sure enough, it did happen. We got developed all around the zoo. And so, somebody's unhappy up there, I think. Oh, Are you feeding something, or what? Uh, but um, we, we, we first started by telling the folks in Columbus, you know, how, how the zoo would be a you know, I know, sure. uh, how great how great the zoo would be, even though our zoo wasn't really that great back then. And we passed a little bond issue in 19... I'm just giving you a little history here, because this is what's happened to your zoo as well. In 1979, we passed a million-dollar bond issue in the city of Columbus. And that helped us get off, get off the road there, paint the buildings and things like that. 1985, we had a property tax in Columbus, because the Columbus Zoo is located in Franklin County. Not the city, obviously the city of Columbus is in Franklin County. Now, I'm telling you all the history of the zoo, because it's very important. Because this zoo was probably ranked one of the top worst zoos out of two back then by 175 zoos, one of the bottom five zoos in the entire country. So we, we went to the voter, we, we would take our animals out in the community and do all sorts of programs, that kind of thing, so everybody just loved their zoo by 1985. We passed a little property tax for about $10 million. Yeah, I don't know, it cost every homeowner 10 bucks. And we passed that by about 72% of the vote, first property tax in 1985. 1990, we passed it as five year renewable property tax. You know what that is, don't you? You have that here, I imagine. Um, <laughs> 1990, uh, we passed another one for about $30 million. In 1995, we passed one for over $75 million. And in 2005, we passed a 10 year renewable property tax in Franklin County for $195 million for public zoo, passed by 75%. So it shows you what you folks can do here. And I'm not saying your city or county has to have a property tax. I'm going to make it all up in arms. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, when folks in their community love their zoo, like I'm sure most of you all who would be here tonight love your zoo, it just shows you what can be done. I'm often asked, what's the best zoo in the United States of America? Well, I think my zoo, Columbus, is. So it's San Diego. So we're a bunch of them. There's bunches of them. Also, the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo in Fort Wayne, Indiana, on 32 acres. It's incredible. I, I rank in the top 10. Now, I don't care if a zoo's on one acre or one million acres. It makes no difference to me. It's about who your staff is, what your collection is, 
what your belief is, what the community wants. It's that simple. It's you folks, as, as your, your president said, it's you folks who decide what you want. It's not them or your board, really. It's what you folks want your new to be. And they're very, very important to the community. They really are. When someone comes to move here, I'm sure I know that I see some of our friends from, you know, Rainbird is here, correct? I see some of our friends from Rainbird. Don't you ever come here for Rainbird? Yeah. Yeah. Office, right? Mm -hmm. right. Well, they, they, I've been doing their Rainbird float for almost, uh, it's my 13th year in a row, right? And they give a contribution for tremendous assets for, for helping not just uh, uh, mammals, but birds throughout the world. So Rainbird is very much um, ecologically minded, that company is. And I'm just saying that because I see some of our friends here from Rainbird tonight. But anyway, that's how the Columbus Zoo got going and how we got built there because of the people that live in Columbus, Ohio.